Our final feature in 1958 takes us to the docks again. One of the largest and most famous docks railway systems in the country was that at Southampton, which was owned by the railways. Particularly well known were the southern region's USA class of dock shunting engines, which had been bought as government surplus after the war. Fourteen of these machines roamed the docks throughout the 1950s. There was a tremendous variety of locomotives to be seen on the dock system, which was still working at its peak. One of the southern region's class five locomotives is seen bringing an ocean liner express into the docks, passing an ex-London Brighton and South Coast Railway E1 060 tank, which is then seen at the watering point alongside the USA and another Brighton tank, a class E2. Mainline engines were serviced at Eastleigh Depot, but the shunters had their own depot within the docks complex. Each locomotive's duties were denoted by a disc with a number on it fitted to the lamp irons. Southampton docks was very cosmopolitan. No doubt the sailors of this American merchant vessel would have felt very much at home when they saw the switches, or class USA tanks. They'd been brought over to Europe as austerity machines and offered for sale as surplus to requirements after the war. Their very short wheelbase, easy maintenance and comparative power made them ideal dock shunters. This engine was unique, being built by porters, whilst all the others were built by Vulcan. The USAs were supplemented by four of the Brighton class E2 tanks, which had a much longer wheelbase at 16 feet than the Americans at 10 feet. 32109 had arrived in November 1956. The reason for John Adams' visit to Southampton was to film the radio telephone cab to shore system that was in use to control movements around the docks. This was unique in Great Britain. The locomotives were equipped with whip aerials, radio telephones and turbo generators to provide the required power. The drivers at first objected to their loss of freedom, but were mollified when they realised that they had an efficient form of communication back to base. This meant they could get relief crews or remind control when their shift was at an end. In addition to the transatlantic trade, the Port of Southampton catered for much closer traffic. Channel Islands boats were met by Channel Islands boat trains, which were frequently headed by bullied light Pacifics and it's number 34063 of the Battle of Britain class that we see partly in warehouse number 9. This engine bore the name 229 Squadron to commemorate the Battle of Britain heroes of the Second World War. Although registered at Liverpool, Cunard's flagship Queen Elizabeth was the most famous ship at Southampton in the 1950s. 
This magnificent liner, together with her sister ship Queen Mary, ran a weekly service from Southampton to New York in competition with the United States liners. So important was this traffic to the railways, even after the war, that a new ocean terminal had been built specifically to cater for the huge liners. This was considered to be a major project in its day, and it had two railway tracks feeding directly into it, so that passengers had as little hardship as possible when transferred from ship to train. Special trains were run, usually with headboards. Maunsell's Lord Nelson's monopolized this traffic, and his equally famous King Arthur's were also to be seen on this work. The Lord Nelsons were allocated to Eastleigh Depot principally for the boat train work, the named expressers being made up of Pullman stock in the case of the Cunada and United States Lines trains. Also to be seen were trains for Union Castle and many other shipping lines, after which Bullitt's Merchant Navy class locomotives were named. Three double zero seven four was the last of the USA class, but four of them have been preserved. Not so lucky, though, was the docks complex. Today, this area has been turned over to a multi-screen cinema and housing. However, that was in the long distant future. 1959 was just around the corner.